Okay, let's talk about the Praxis exam. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the middle school math exam. I don't uh, recall the code just this moment, but as, uh, as you probably well know, uh, the Praxis um, a test, there are several, you know, teacher certification tests used for a lot of uh, states. And uh, you, uh, you got to look at the code for the test you're going to be taking. I'm sure you know this if you're watching this video because who else would be watching a Praxis Middle School math video unless you're going for this. Well, anyways, just a little bit about myself. I'm a math teacher taught uh, middle school, high school, college. Uh, I've taken a Praxis many years ago um, and they're challenging exams. Um, you may have taken another Praxis uh, maybe not the middle school math if you're obviously studying for it but as you well know you got to respect these um, praxis exams they're not easy and they shouldn't be easy because teaching is a profession right um, so if you're looking to teach middle school math uh, my belief has always been um, just my personal philosophy I have a degree in mathematics not math education but actual mathematics and a master's degree as well and when you're teaching high school level math, you know, I, you know, you really need to have a command of that topic. So I guess what I'm saying is to teach high school math, you really need to have studied college level math and to, to do well in middle school, uh, I think it's appropriate and they're going to test you to really understand, you know, high school level mathematics can just not middle school math because in middle school math, you're going to be teaching what, like say sixth, seventh, pre-algebra you might be teaching algebra one it depends on your middle school if it's like an honors program but you're going to be teaching you know primarily up in in, in these ranges here so yes you don't need to know you know uh, logarithms and uh, you know how to solve a three variable system etc however you you know to pass this exam you're going to need to you know have a really strong understanding of high school level math so if you're interested um, in learning from me beyond this video I actually have a Praxis Middle School Math prep, prep course extremely comprehensive um, I'll leave the link in the description of this video if you're interested and you like my teaching style but with that being said let's kind of dabble with this practice problem so um, I have a systems of equation and I'd like you to see if you can um, solve it okay so if you want to give uh, give this a try. Maybe you want to pause the video and give it a whirl. And then obviously I will go uh, over it. Okay, so this problem is actually very easy. So hopefully you didn't just start attacking this thing using, say, the substitution method or the elimination method. And there's even other techniques you can use to solve systems that are more advanced. Okay the idea here with this particular problem and I'm hoping that you got got it right but if you didn't not a not a big deal but it is an indication that you're definitely going to have to do some review is let's just look at um, what a system is graphically okay this should be review I hope but if not again no panic alright so graphically speaking draw a little XY axis here a system like the one we have here is basically it's a it's taking a look at two linear equations this happens to be a linear system of equations but essentially what's going on here well there's one line line one and then there's another line two and I mean line equation linear equation this is a system of linear equations so what's the possibility of what can happen with two lines on an xy um, plane well, you could have one line, let's call this line one, and you have another line, line two. And what happens right here, they intersect, right? So where these two lines intersect, this XY point is the solution to this system. Okay, the system involving line one and line two. No problem, right? Now, let's just kind of uh, look at these two lines here observe what's different about these lines the obvious thing is they have a different slope okay so because they have a different slope different angle they are going to intersect so now let's take a look at this scenario all right I'll do this as nicely as I can 
All right, so here we have line two. Let's get rid of this. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, now line one and line two are parallel. To, parallel, uh, that's equal, parallel to one another. Okay, so because they're parallel to one another, um, they are not going to intersect. Therefore, this system, okay, does not have a solution. All right, and then of course, there's one more case where one line can actually be you kind of think of it on top of another line there's infinitely many solutions so all these things you should you know be you know know about it's not just enough to like see a system and be like okay i know how to solve it and get the x y you got another principles behind what is a system um you know conceptually going on and of course as a teacher on the other end of this video i know you respect that and i'm sure you uh you're of like like mind, right? You got to know it to teach it, all right? So let's take a look at this particular problem. Now that we've did like a little quick review, we can quickly see that this first line, let's call it line one, let's call this line two. If we notice, I wrote both of these lines out in slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b form. So I can easily identify the slope. Here, the, Here's the slope, okay, it's two. And now I have over here, this other line has a slope too. So these lines um, have the same slope. So when two lines are parallel, the slopes, okay, are the same. So here we have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, different y-intercepts. So they're going to cross at different locations along the y-axis. So what's what can you say about this system? Well, there there are no solutions, okay? because these guys will never cross, no solutions. So hopefully you didn't think of this as a um, trick question because it's certainly not a trick in terms of a system, <laughs> systems go. And as you know, um, uh, systems uh, can be introduced at the middle school level. I taught, like I said, middle, middle school, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade. And they're completely different. When I taught middle school, I thought, oh, well, I know how to teach. And then I went to high school and I was a different deal. And I taught freshmen and that's completely different than teaching seniors. <laughs> so I'm sure you may know this already. But um, the bottom line is this. You're going into this praxis test, you know, to teach mathematics. Take these tests serious. Don't go in and 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 fail if you can avoid it. You really need to you really need to study. Even if you know the material, you got to review. Okay, just because you have the formal background, don't rely on your memory. Okay, you got to go in and deep dive into all these concepts, equations. Uh, you know, I can go on and on and on. And there's a considerable amount, definitely, on um, uh, the Praxis middle, middle school. Uh, math exam. So let's go and wrap this up. Um, so if you like my teaching style, again, I do a lot in uh, online education. I've been doing this for a long, long time. It's my passion. Um, I have various different courses, but I have very uh, comprehensive test prep courses. So I'll leave the link in the description for my Praxis uh, Middle School Math course uh, below. Also, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. Hopefully you'll uh, subscribe and check those out various levels of math, many that will help you out for this exam. If you enjoyed the video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Let me know how um, things are going for you as a teacher, you know, um, in terms of what your school may be requiring. You know, I like to learn from fellow teachers out there. Now, not all states, as you know, use the practice exam. Many uh, many do. So if you're, for example, in the state of California, you're not going to be watching this te uh, this test because they use the CSET and the CBEST, right? But many states use the Praxis exams. And, you know, it's good to have um, have that, you know, um, that Praxis uh, exam behind you because if, for example, um, you move to another state, you do have reciprocity in many states. Um, but so, you know, the Praxis exam is a great program. I wish you all the best on it. Um, again, don't take it lightly and uh, keep working hard. And I wish you all the best. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.